Hello, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my biochemistry playlist. In the last video, we had 10 biochemistry questions. In today's video, we have five more biochemistry questions. So without further ado, let's get started. You'll also find these videos in a playlist called MCAT questions. You'll find biology questions, chemistry questions, biochemistry questions, all kinds of questions. Here's the question that we stopped at in the last video. Which of the following amino acids cannot contribute to the process of raising blood sugar during prolonged starvation? Is it lysine, alanine, arginine, or tyrosine? Can you please pause and try to answer this yourself? Let's talk about it. Basically, what they're asking you is which of the following amino acids is glucogenic and which is not glucogenic. If I am an amino acid and can contribute to raising your blood sugar during starvation, then I am a glucogenic amino acid, glucogenesis, genesis of glucose. I can make glucose. But if I am a non-glucogenic amino acid, it means that I cannot raise your blood sugar. I cannot make glucose. Which of these is not glucogenic? Answer A, lysine, because lysine is ketogenic, not glucogenic. What's the other amino acid that is also ketogenic? If you said leucine, you're absolutely correct. Do you remember this chart? We talked about this in my metabolism videos, particularly the video on protein metabolism, proteogenesis, and proteolysis. And this was also mentioned in my video on gluconeogenesis. All of these amino acids are glucogenic. They can make glucose. How about these amino acids? They are both glucogenic and ketogenic, so they can still make glucose because they are included within the big circle. How about these two doofuses right here, leucine and lysine? They are purely ketogenic ketogenic, never glucogenic. They can never raise your blood sugar. And that's why the answer to the last question is lysine. Next, all of the following hormones are secreted by the anterior pituitary, except which one? Can you please pause and answer this? The correct answer is ADH. ADH does not come from the anterior pituitary. ADH comes from the hypothalamus, which will then give to the posterior pituitary. So ADH is the answer. Everything else is anterior pituitary. Look at that. Here's my hypothalamus. Here's the anterior pituitary. Here's the posterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary secretes growth hormone, LH and FSH, TSH, ACTH, and prolactin. How about the posterior pituitary? It did not synthesize anything. It just took the ADH and the oxytocin made already by the hypothalamus, stored them there in the posterior pituitary, and then dished them out to the bloodstream. Next, which of the following is true regarding glucokinase? Is it A, it has a lower Km than hexokinase, or B, it has a lower capacity than hexokinase, C, it's present in the islets of Langerhans, D, it has higher affinity than hexokinase. Please pause. Let me tell you what the word capacity here means. It means V max. If something has low capacity, it means it is easily saturated. If something has high capacity, it means it's not easily saturated. If you recall my comparison between glucokinase versus hexokinase, we talked about this before in my video titled Glucose Transporters. Glucokinase, high Km meaning lower affinity compared to hexokinase, which has low Km meaning higher affinity to glucose. But capacity-wise, glucokinase is high in Vmax, meaning high capacity. Hexokinase is low Vmax, meaning low capacity. Site or location, glucokinase is in the liver and in the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans of the pancreas. Hexokinase is in most cells. Hexokinase is in a hell lot of cells. So out of these options, which one is correct? The answer is C. Glucokinase is in the islets of Langerhans. Glucokinase has a higher Km than hexokinase. It has a higher capacity than hexokinase. It has a lower affinity than hexokinase. Because if you have high Km, you'll have low affinity. Next, here's a lovely diagram with many chemicals indeed. And then on the arrows, there are several enzymes denoted as X, Y, Z, and L. The question is, the enzymes denoted by these letters are what, 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 and what, respectively. Is it A? Is it B? Is it C, D, or E? PFK1 stands for phosphofructokinase 1, PFK2 stands for phosphofructokinase 2. Please pause and try to answer this. Let's start by X. X converts fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1 and 6-bisphosphate, i.e. it adds a phosphate. If it adds a phosphate, it's probably a kinase. And it adds a phosphate to carbon number 1, 
So it's a PFK1. So I know that the first enzyme or enzyme X has to be PFK1. So B is out, C is out. Next, let's look at Y. Oh, that's an enzyme that removes a phosphate at carbon number one. What would you call an enzyme that removes a phosphate? Phosphatase. And since it's removing it from carbon number one, it's phosphatase one. So I know that the second enzyme has to be fructose bisphosphatase one, which makes A incorrect and D is also incorrect. So I'm stuck with E, but let's double check. How about PFK2 at Z? PFK2 means phosphofructokinase two, adding a phosphate at carbon number two. Yes, indeed, that's how we convert fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 2 and 6-bisphosphate. And the last one is fructose bisphosphatase 2. That's how we convert fructose 2 and 6-bisphosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. Next, question 14. Which of the following represents the reduction half reaction in the last step of the electron transport chain? Please pause. And what do you think the answer is? What's the last step in the electron transport chain? Oh, oxygen is the final electron acceptor. Thank you. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor. When you accept electrons, you are being reduced. So that's the reduction half reaction. And when you reduce oxygen, you reduce it into water. If you recall from my video on the electron transport chain, we talked about this. At complex 4, you have 2H plus 2O2 giving me H2O. Oxygen is being reduced to water. And in chemistry, reduction can mean one of three things. A. Gaining hydrogen. Or B. Losing oxygen. Or C. Gaining a negative electron. Question 15. A patient experiences fasting hypoglycemia, hepatomegaly, and ketosis. His doctor diagnosed him with a glycogen storage disease. Which of the following enzymes is the most likely to be deficient? Is it A, branching enzyme, B, glycogen synthase, C, glucokinase or hexokinase, or D, glucose 6-phosphatase? Please pause. I know here that this patient is suffering from glycogen storage disease. Okay, now, is it a problem in making glycogen, i.e. building up glycogen, or is it a problem in breaking down glycogen to glucose? Let's see. When this patient fasts, he suffers from low blood sugar, which means it's a problem in breaking down glycogen. When you cannot break down glycogen, i.e. when you cannot perform glycogenolysis, you will suffer from fasting hypoglycemia. All of this glycogen that you failed to break down will accumulate in the liver, so the liver will be big, hepatomegaly. And when you cannot utilize your carbohydrates as a source of energy, you will shift to fat and you will break down the fat to get some energy. And when you break down the fat, what do you get? Ketone bodies, ketosis. What are the ketone bodies? Acetone, acetoacetic acid, and beta-hydroxybutyric acid. So I know that this patient's problem is in breaking down glycogen. Question is, which of these is involved in breaking down glycogen? Is it branching enzyme? No, branching enzyme helps me build up glycogen anabolic, not catabolic. Is it glycogen synthase? No, that's another enzyme that helps me synthesize glycogen. How about glucokinase or hexokinase? Nope. How about glucose 6-phosphatase? Yes, this belongs to the pathway of breaking down glycogen, i.e. glycogenolysis. And this chart is from my video on glycogen metabolism. Remember, Let's break down glycogen. Glycogen will become glucose 1-phosphate. What enzymes are needed here? Glycogen phosphorylase and the D-branching enzyme. Then I have glucose 1-phosphate. By a mutase, you mutated the 1-phosphate into 6-phosphate. So you're changing the position of the phosphate. Then, by glucose 6-phosphatase, you break down glucose 6-phosphate into glucose. If I have a problem here, it means that I cannot break down glycogen to glucose. So every time I'm fasting, I will be unable to break down my glycogen to glucose. That's why I get fasting hypoglycemia. That's why I develop hepatomegaly. And that's why I'll shift to ketosis. What's the name of this disease that this patient suffer from? Answer, von Gerke's disease or glycogen storage disease type 1. To learn more about the different glycogen storage diseases, please refer to my playlist called clinical biochemistry. That's why the answer to the last question was glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency. Next, peptide bond formation is an example of blank reaction, whereas peptide bond breakdown is an example of blank reaction respectively. Is it oxidation and reduction? 
Is it reduction and oxidation? Is it condensation and hydrolysis? Or double replacement and combustion? Let me know your answer in the comments. You will find the answer key in the next video when we talk even more biochemistry questions. If you want to see more videos like these in the future, please consider buying me a coffee. You can download my biochemistry notes, biology notes, general chemistry notes, physiology notes, hematology notes, pulmonology notes, rheumatology notes, all kinds of notes on my website, metacosisperfectsnetics.com. I help you pass exams. If you want to understand glomerular filtration rate, renal clearance, titratable acidity at your late distal and collecting ducts, download my renal physiology course at metacosisperfectionalist.com. I will help you learn physiology like it's nobody's business. There are more than 1500 educational videos on this channel, plus 300 videos available only to those who click the join button and choose the highest tier. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website, to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.